Welcome to the Fellowship San Antonio podcast. Our hope is that this podcast will help you to develop a life-changing relationship with God. Sometimes the shepherd boy wished that something really exciting could happen in the course of a day, but not much occurred. Not, Not much excitement occurred in the life of a shepherd. The shepherd boy sat upon the grassy hillside and rested from his day of gentle labor. Slowly he reclined back upon the grass and gazed in wonder as an occasional shooting star raced across the heavens. The glittery stars seemed to dance in the night as they glistened in the heavens above. The coolness of the night and the clearness of the sky seemed to carry a presence of solitude and peace as he lay gazing thinking, dreaming. His day had been uneventful. It was just another day of abiding in the fields, keeping watch over the flocks. Very little excitement ever occurred in the life of a shepherd. Oh, there was the occasional wolf attack. Wolves usually, uh, wolf attacks usually occurred at night and the shepherds had to always be on guard. But wolf attacks were quite uncommon these days. Most of the wolves had been killed off over the years, and the bears were mostly gone now too. The shepherds would sometimes sit in the evenings and rehearse the stories about their younger days and all the heroics they had performed defending their sheep. But he knew it; most of it was embellishment. In the ancient days, when King David was a shepherd boy, the dangers still lurked. But that had been a long, long time ago. And now with modern traps and snares, the problem had all but been eliminated. Though shepherding was an honorable profession held in high esteem among shepherds, few others respected the calling. Had not one of their own become king? King David was the hero of heroes among all of the Hebrews, but even more so among the shepherds. Not only had he been a shepherd, but like they, King David was of the town of Bethlehem. He had walked these same hills, fed his sheep on the same pastures, and led them beside the same still waters. Sheep were common throughout all the land, but these flocks were different. Most of the flocks in Israel were raised for their wool and their meat, but these flocks would entertain a different calling. These were the flocks of Bethlehem. These were the temple lambs. Every year, thousands of lambs were offered in sacrifice, and these were the flocks that produced the finest of lambs for the temple. Oh, there were other flocks in the area that also provided sacrificial lambs, but these were the very, very best. The legal requirements for temple lambs demanded the highest in quality, though such standards were rarely honored. The religious leaders didn't care much anymore, and most of the other shepherds had lowered their standards, but these lambs had no blemish. His father and the shepherds with him were of the old school. They protected and nourished and cared for their sheep. The lambs were kept from blemish and defect. When a conscientious worshiper came to the temple and demanded a perfect lamb, that lamb came always from flocks that belonged to his father and to his uncles and to their fathers before them. They were the finest in all of Israel. The shepherds always brought their flocks together in the evening so they could spend the night together. Though the flocks could mingle during the night, in the morning the sheep always knew who their master was and would obediently follow the sound of his voice. His father's sheep would never follow his uncle's voice and vice versa. They knew to whom they belonged. Once the sheep were gathered together for the night, the shepherds sat visiting, retelling the events of the day. The shepherd boy sat nearby. There would be plenty of time to listen to the tales of the others. For now, he would sit alone and keep to his own thoughts. He was the youngest among them and 
didn't always enjoy being part of their conversations. They would talk of things that had little interest to him. He would sit close enough to hear, but far enough to dream. The shepherds were talking religion and politics as usual. They were discussing the census and the tax that had been ordered by Caesar Augustus. This was the third year of the 192nd Olympiad on the Roman calendar, but most common people just refer to it as the 24th year of Caesar Augustus. The Roman economy was in turmoil. The shepherd boy listened to talk that he did not well understand, it was talk about inflation and trade and devalued coinage. Whatever all of this meant, it added up to the whole world being taxed to raise revenue for a struggling economy. The shepherds wondered when the day would come that they would be delivered from the oppression of such evil and incompetent imperialistic emperors. One day Messiah would come and set them free. He would bring deliverance to his people, and like in the days of David, they would be a mighty people again. Messiah would bring a new kingdom that would be rich in every way. The conversation among the shepherds turned to the temple. There was an old man at the temple named Simeon who said that the Spirit of God had given him a promise that he would not die until he had seen Messiah. The shepherds all laughed loud and long. Old Simeon was a bit senile and he was ancient of days. If God was going to send Messiah in Simeon's lifetime, he better hurry up because Simeon could drop over at any time. The shepherds laughed again. Old Simeon made great entertainment for the shepherds in the evenings. The thoughts of the shepherd boy began to stray. He had gone to the temple with his father on various occasions. The temple and the surrounding court seemed to be a collecting place for the strange. He remembered seeing an old woman whom a friend had told him was over a hundred years old. Though his father had moderated the exaggeration by suggesting that she was probably in her 80s. She was a prophetess. Was always preaching about redemption. Her prophetic message was that God had not forgotten his people. She said that he would one day rescue his people from the bondage that they were in, redeeming them unto himself, establishing a mighty kingdom once again. He wondered if when he was old, he too would become a crazy old person at the temple. But as he sat alone, he dreamed of the better day that Messiah would bring. The prophet had said that the virgin would be with child. Another prophet had said that out of Bethlehem would come one who would be ruler over all Israel. He looked off in the distance toward Bethlehem. Tonight they were very close to the town, camping only about a half of a million away. The shepherd boy could actually hear some faint sounds coming from the town. There was not much to the village, just an inn, a few small businesses, and a handful of residential homes. But it was busy these days. With the census and tax, people were coming from far away to register. In a way, it was like a big celebration or a family reunion. Old friends and family, family members who had not seen each other in years and sometimes never, were now being reunited. All of the descendants of King David would come to Bethlehem to pay their taxes. As he gazed toward the town, he sensed that Bethlehem was different tonight. There was a change that he could not describe, nor could he actually see a difference, but he could feel it. There was an excitement, an aura of splendor, a nostalgic holiness seemed to linger upon the village. Was it only him? Or could the people in the town sense the difference tonight? The holy haze seemed to intensify the longer he looked. There was a magnetic attraction to the village. He decided to go and see what it was that made Bethlehem different tonight. It was such a short distance that he could have been there in just a few minutes 
but he walked instead in the direction that will allow him to intersect the road that approached Bethlehem from the north. You never knew who you might meet along the road, for interesting people often journeyed this way. As he neared the road, it, it appeared deserted. He sat for a moment on a nearby rock and, and waited. Shortly, a strange young couple emerged from the darkness. He could tell by the accent of the man that these people were from Galilee. The man was walking, leading a burrow with his young wife, who was very much with child. The young shepherd could tell that her time was near. She moaned occasionally, and her husband had a sense of hurried anxiety about him. The shepherd boy had helped with a lot of births. For when the lambs were born in the spring, the ewes often needed assistance. But he really didn't want to help out tonight. It was time to go into town and see what was going on. Bethlehem was busy. There were people everywhere. He would go first to the well and get a drink. The waters of Bethlehem were the best in all of Judea, and even King David had delighted to drink of this water. The well was crowded with people. It was situated close to the inn and was a gathering place for people to visit. He enjoyed being there. He talked with a few acquaintances and a few strangers. Time passed easily at the well. The mood in town was very different tonight. He could not tell if it was just because of the crowd and the commotion or if there was something in the air. No one else seemed to notice. No one else even mentioned it. As he enjoyed the activity at the well, he noticed that the man and woman from Galilee were just arriving at the inn. The man summoned the innkeeper and introduced himself as Joseph, the son of Jacob, the son of Metham, the son of Eleazar, the son of David. He was concerned about his wife who was to give birth to their firstborn at any time. Upon hearing that there was no room for them in the inn, they pondered what to do. There was nowhere to go. This was not a big city like Jerusalem, but just a burg. Every one of the lineage of David had come to register and pay their taxes. The town was bursting at the seams. Those fortunate enough to have family or close friends living in Bethlehem stayed in the houses, but even if these travelers would have known someone, all the houses were full. The common room of the inn was no place for a woman, especially one giving birth but they had come here in desperation. And the inn was full. Where could they go? The innkeeper, short on patience and short on time to spare, and with the desperation in his voice at the thought of a child being born on the step of his inn, shouted, stay in the stable, go, go away. As they departed, the shepherd boy decided it was time for him to go as well. He needed some quiet. There was a spot by the edge of town where two palm trees grew. He would go and sit and think and watch. Arriving there, he soon made himself comfortable. Leaning back, he noticed the constellations above. One star appeared different tonight. It shone brighter. Being a shepherd, his father had taught him much of the stars. The Hebrews had given special names to some of them. Jupiter was known as the king star, and Saturn was called Messiah's star. Ancient Jewish astrologers had predicted that Messiah would come on the day when Messiah's star and the king star came together in the heavens. Not many actually believed the prediction, but he wondered if such a convergence was what made the star so bright. As his gaze fixed upon it, the radiance grew brighter and brighter until it appeared to illumine all of Bethlehem. That was it. That was what was different tonight. There was a holiness in the star, a sense of light 
in the midst of darkness. He wanted to bathe in the glow of the star, but it was time to return to the flocks. His father would wonder what had become of him by now. Walking was easy tonight because of the brightness of the sky, and as he walked through Bethlehem, the people were still at the well. The town was still noisy. People were still laughing and having a good time. But no one seemed to notice the star. They were all too busy with their reunions. He walked past the inn and past the businesses. He walked past the houses and finally on the very edge of town, he walked past the stable. It was small and quite dilapidated. It boarded a few horses for wealthy travelers and a milk cow or two. As the shepherd boy passed, he remembered the woman who was great with child and wondered how she was. It was quiet at the stable, and only a dim light shone from within. Quiet was not the right word. There was a hush here, almost a holy hush. Indeed, it was a strange night. As he neared his father and the other shepherds, he was excited to ask them about the star. In the illumination of the night, he could see them looking up into the heavens. They had noticed it too. He could hear their voices. Their discussion was on the zodiac. The bright star seemed to be coming out of Pisces, the Pisces constellation, but it was so bright it was hard to discern exactly where it was located. Many signs of the zodiac signified certain countries, and Pisces signified Palestine, or as they called it, the house of the Hebrews. He stood with the other shepherds looking into the starry night. Suddenly, suddenly it began to magnify in its brightness. Brighter and brighter it grew until it was a blinding light. Shielding their eyes, they began to realize that the brightness of the star had transformed into the brilliance of some kind of supernatural being. Was it an angel? The shepherd boy was terrified. There was an awesome holiness as the glory of the Lord shone round about them. He fell prostrate to the ground in smothering fear. This was the end. He would surely die. He fought to hang on to consciousness. Concentrate. He must concentrate on what was happening. He wanted to cry. He wanted to scream. He wanted to run. But it was as if his legs were paralyzed. Do not fear. The soothing, consoling voice of the angel spoke and the sound brought calm to his soul. It wasn't a voice like any he had ever heard before. It was more like the sound of a thousand harps lifting a melody of praise. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Instantly the air was filled with angels who had come to join the first. Together as in heavenly harmony they praised God singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. And as quickly and unexpectedly as they had come they were gone. The sky was still bright with the shining of the star, though not as bright as it had been with the angels. The shepherds were astonished, stunned, amazed. It took them a moment to recover. But in his youthful enthusiasm, the young shepherd boy with excitement growing every moment shouted, let's go to Bethlehem and see. The star appeared to show the way. It hovered over the town of Bethlehem and 
was as the fire by night which led the Israelites of old through the wilderness. Approaching the town, the shepherd boy noticed that it had grown quiet now. They would first pass the stable. He was wondering how the couple had fared with, the, with their birth. When suddenly the words of the angel echoed in his mind. You shall find the babe lying in a manger. Messiah would be found lying in a manger. Messiah was at the stable. As they entered, it was with a spirit of expectation and worship. There stood Joseph, the son of David. Beside him rested the mother, and lying in the manger, wrapped not in the majestic purple robes due a king, but in the humble strips of cloth that identified true poverty was the Christ child. The shepherd boy, along with the others, knelt beside the manger and bowed in humble adoration before the child, a baby. Messiah, born in this place of filth, wrapped in swaddling clothes and sleeping in a manger made for animals. This was indeed a great mystery. Strange as it was, there was a gentle, quiet peace here. It was a holy place. It was as if the Shekinah presence of God had filled the stable. But why had God done this holy thing in a stable? How could it be so that Messiah would be born here? Where were the kingly accommodations and the robes of majesty? He remembered the innkeeper sending them away because there was no room. How could there be no room for the Christ? How could anyone knowingly turn him away? Who would ever reject the Savior? It was unfathomable to the young shepherd boy. For here in this manger was the hope of all the world. Here was God's gift of love. Here was the one sent to bring victory over sin to all who would believe. Here was the light of God shining in a dark world. Here was the one who would make peace between God and man. As time would pass, the Magi would come from the east to worship him. King Herod would despise him and try to kill him. Some, like Simeon and Anna in the temple, would prophesy over him and glorify God for him and recognize him as the promised seed of David, while others would hate him and reject him and finally one day crucify him. As the shepherd boy grew into a man and watched those events, he came to know that every heart was an inn and every person must decide if they had room for Jesus. He would hear the words that Jesus spoke one day saying, light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light. I tell you the truth, he that believes in me will have everlasting life. The shepherd boy knew this night and for the rest of his life that there was room in his heart for Jesus, for Jesus was his confidence for everlasting life in heaven. There would always be room in his heart for Jesus. With humble hearts we bow in adoration before this child, gift of God's matchless love, sent from on high to purchase our salvation, that we might dwell with him ever above. What grace untold to leave the bliss of glory and die for sinners guilty and forlorn. O day of joy, when in eternal splendor he shall return in his glory to reign with every tongue due praise to him 
shall render his power and might to all nations proclaim a thrill of hope our longing heart rejoices for soon shall dawn that glad eternal morn fall on your knees behold the lord most holy o night when christ was born o night o night divine